Well, I know who set their clocks forward, <laughs> at least. I was just talking to the, uh, to the folks watching at home, and I was kind of uh, tongue-in-cheek, smiling a little bit, saying, you know, and they, they couldn't see me, but they could hear me, as they can now. This is it. We all know who didn't set their clocks forward now because you're watching online. That's probably not the case with all of them, but uh, we're glad that they're with us here too. And uh, you just never know what's going to happen on these time change Sundays. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it, it can be hard. Uh, my body is telling me that it's 9 o'clock right now, and I, I dare say yours is too, but we'll get through it, and we're going to enjoy our, our time together here today, uh, worshiping the Lord. All right, Gail is our worship leader today. She's got a boatload of announcements, so I'll turn it over to her. Morning. Welcome to our service, and God bless you today, all that came out. And welcome to snow in March. Not fair. Um, yeah. Women's Guild meetings on Thursday the 23rd at noon. Please sign up. Lunch will be provided. The next Breakfast and Blessing is slated for March 25th. At 8.30 to 10, see Carol, any questions? Our next church workday is Saturday, March 18th at 8.30. All help is welcome. Today's lovely flowers are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Are given from our wonderful Jim Hag in memory of Joanne and also from Jerry and Betty Seegers in memory of Ray and Marie Seegers. This week's calling club are Robin Becker, Ginny Arndt, and Mary Gilbert. Any questions, give Shara a call. Bible study continues on Wednesday, March 15th at 1 p.m. in the library. They're beginning a new study on 2 Corinthians. Pastor Wendell has extra study guides, whether you want to participate in person or online. Give Pastor your email if you're interested in, on, in online study. Our March Lenten series, The Last Words of Jesus, continues today. Come and invite a friend to take in this timely series, concluding on Easter Sunday. Looking ahead to next Sunday, we'll have a full lineup featuring Sadie Surgeon's Confirmation. Third Sunday, Sing. Gideon Bible, Don Scapel will be here sharing his ministry. Think Spring. Yeah, we're trying real hard. March <laughs> is also one of our membership months. If you're looking for a place to call home, we would love to welcome and honor all members on Sunday, March 26th. See Pastor if you're interested. Okie doke. Amen. Oh, so I got one more, Gail, that didn't make it on there. Is, uh, and we'll announce this over the next couple weeks. On Tuesday, March 28th, uh, uh, the folks, Tom Norwalk and the folks over at Zion uh, UCC, they're going to be having a community service. It's a Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock. <laughs> and uh, so they'll have several area churches that are going to be part of that. Uh, I think the Methodist folks, the Catholic folks, and, and someone else, he was telling me going to be part of that. So they're inviting us. If anyone is, is so moved, you may uh, come and be a part of that. So we'll announce that for the next couple of weeks. But that's March 28th, which is a Tuesday at 7 o'clock over at Zion in Dyer. Okay. Go ahead, Gail. Okay. All rise for the call to worship. Lift up your voice and call out to God. Come together and wait for God. We come together, trusting that God is still speaking. Surely God's presence is here with us now. We wait in hope, for God's steadfast love lifts our hearts. Come worship the Lord. Our hymn is 186, There's a Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Amen. Amen. And that's what I love about this church, that there is a sweet, sweet spirit here, not just this morning, but all the time. Praise God for that. We're going to do all the verses, Ken. All two of them. All two verses. Sweet. He did. He heard me. Praise God, huh? <laughs> Amen. God bless you, buddy. Still praying for you. Go ahead, Lord. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face. And I know they feel the presence of the Lord. 
with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall be. Amen. She's fulfilled her allotment of mistakes for the year, so we're good, we're good for the rest of the year. All right, thank you, Laura. Now for invocation. Turn away from the calls of worldly success. Repent and turn back to God. Turn away from the desire to have what everyone else has. Repent and turn back to God. Turn away from greed and the race for power. Turn back to God. As we walk in Lent, may we turn back to God. May we seek forgiveness, healing, and wholeness. Let's greet our friends. Amen.
man. seated. It appears that we are kidless today. But we have kids kids at heart. Kids at heart here. Uh, that's, that's right. Okay, let's see here. What are we collecting for? Today's the Heifer Fund, our international ministry. So we'll, we'll get our adult kids all right, good deal. And while Laura's playing that, remember I've got on the in the narthex the door hangers. There's a bunch of them laying out on the counter. Just pick up a pack and uh, distribute them to the to the left or right of you. We just hang them on the door. You don't have to talk to anybody or do anything. Just hang them on the door, and uh, they they work very well that way. All right. Thank you. Very nice. All right, Gail, I'm throwing a monkey wrench in here on you. Okay. So just have a seat just for a second. Okay, put that right there. Okay. Now, I know I'm not Rusty Nail Crossing or, or the other real good group that we had today, but just talk to Laura. I'm going to try to sing 240 if you want to follow along with me. Feel free. If you want to help me out, you're welcome to do that, too. I think this would be a good song on our journey to Lent. So I'm going to try to do this one for you this morning as a special. 240, you said you'd come, meaning Jesus. You said you'd come and share all my sorrows you said you'd be there for all my tomorrows i came so close to sending you away but just like you promised you came here to stay I just had to pray, and Jesus said, come to the water, stand by my side. I know you are thirsty, you won't be denied. I felt every tear drop when in darkness. And I strove to remind you that for those tears I died. Your goodness so great I can understand. And dear Lord, I know 
that all this was planned. I know you're here now and always will be. Your love loosed my chains and in you I'm free. But Jesus, why me? And Jesus said, come to the water, stand by my side. I know you are thirsty, you won't be denied. I felt every tear drop when in darkness you cried. And I strove to remind you that for the tears I died. Jesus, I give you my heart and my soul. I know that without God I'd never be whole. Savior, you opened all the right doors and I thank you Praise you from earth's humble shores. Take me, I'm yours. And Jesus said, Come to the Father, stand by my side. I know you are thirsty, you won't be denied. I felt every Every tear drop when in darkness I cried, and I strove to remind you that for those tears I died. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Laura. Gail, thank you. Our scripture today is from Matthew 27, verses 11 through 14. Jesus faces Pilate. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests, elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not one word, so that the governor marveled greatly. Amen. Thank you, Gail. Thank you so much. Well, I tell you, it's uh, these time change Sundays, as I said, you just never know what you're, what's going to happen, what you're going to get, who will be here and, and who will not. But I'm glad that you're here and we've got God's spirit here with us. And uh, it's uh, what a blessing it is just to be able to worship the Lord today. Now, this message series, The Last Words of Jesus. Today, as Gail's just read, we're going to focus on the trial of Jesus. Now, I mentioned when we started this, you know, these aren't the very last words of Jesus because those words were him hanging on the cross saying, it is finished. And we'll be getting to those very last words here in the next few weeks. But as you think about the last words of Jesus for that whole last week, as he was pondering the cross, as the specter of the cross was just uh, uh, was overshadowing him. And that's one of the things that's really been on my heart with these, these door hangers, especially that, uh, I mean, it's sad to say, folks, but the reality of our world today is that there are people probably living in the shadow of our church all around us that are dying and going to hell. It's, it, it, it's, it's a real probability. And that's why we just need to, it, it starts with one small step. You know, you grabbing you know, uh, 10, 15, 20 of these door hangers and hanging them there and letting God's spirit do the rest. I can't save them. You can't save them. I can't make them come in. You can't make them come in. But we can invite them to know Jesus. We can display in our lives how that he's made a difference for us. 
Believe it or not, you know, I was a mess before I met Jesus. I was, I was only eight years old, but I was a mess. He's made a difference in me. Once I met Jesus, I've never been the same. And we live in a world today where, where we're looking for answers everywhere but Jesus. Everywhere but Jesus. We need to point the world back toward him. as He's the one that can make a difference. In your life, in my life, and in the lives of those that we'll touch today. The last words of Jesus, the trial today. Gail is is read to us just a little bit here from Matthew 27, verses 11 through through 14. Jesus is standing before Pilate. Pontius Pilate, who was the Roman uh, magistrate for that area, the governor, whatever you want to call him. And uh, the, the Jews had brought him before Jesus to accuse him of certain things. And I'm going to backtrack and get into some of that in just a few minutes. But I want you to understand here the last words of Jesus. Sometimes the last words are very few words. The first verse Gail read for us there was Jesus stood before the governor and he asked him, he said, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said to, unto him, My King James Bible, it says, Thou sayest. We put that in modern day vernacular. It's, you said it. You said it. Exactly. You said it. That's all he said. After, he says nothing. He stands there and he he takes it. He just takes the the abuse. So we want to understand here, if you're... If you're anything like me in the past, I know I've been in situations where I've been accused of things, of of, of this or of that. It could have been a work situation. It could be a family situation. It could be in any different situation. I've been accused of of things, and my immediate, the, the spirit within me, and perhaps the spirit within you if you've been in similar circumstances, is to defend yourself. Defend your choice. Defend your rights. Defend whatever it is, but you defend yourself. You're the king of the Jews? He asked Jesus. So you said. So you said. More or less, it's, it's almost, that's common knowledge. That's what the word on the street is. I'm the king of the Jews. But he says nothing else. No, no, no elaborate attempts to defend himself. Not like I would, or perhaps you would. Remember back in the day, I mean, Paul Harvey is, is deceased now, but back in the day he would read, read a page one of, uh, of something, you know, and, and then he would read it, and then, and then he would come back and he would finish the story. He says, and now for the... Exactly. He'd finish it. You'd think it was going one way, but he would have the rest of the story would clarify everything about the beginning of the story. And we want the rest of the story to clarify everything. And we sometimes feel that we need to interject things that elaborate what the rest of the story is. We want to clarify things. Well, you don't understand. You don't have the whole picture of everything going on. As I want to do sometimes as I'm updating, you know, daily the church Facebook page and putting devotions and things like that on, I'll see uh, on Facebook they get these little video clips and, and things like that. And I, one of them fascinated me the other day and I clicked on it and I just watched, they're usually 10, 15, 20 seconds max video clips. And one of them says, uh, I think the, the thing at the bottom says, seeing is not always believing. So when... And I looked on it, and at first you see something. I forget exactly how it goes, but it was something like this. You, know, you see a guy pushing another guy, and then uh, like grabbing a woman or something like that and running straight forward. And then it says, it says now look from this angle. That was the behind angle. Then it's, it look, you look from this angle, and you see the guy grabbing, and he, see, he grabs the woman and, and throws her off to the side. You think, boy, what a... 
you know, what a piece of work this guy is, you know, hitting two people and throwing it out of the way. And then they go to the last angle, the rest of the story, and you see this giant canopy collapsing. And what this guy is doing is he's pushing these people out of the way rather than being rude and egregious to them. He's trying to save their lives because something mighty is going to topple him. But from the other angles, it looked like something else. But when you had the whole story, but that, that's the way we are a lot of times. We want to make sure that everyone that we're in conflict with, or if there's a conflict in our lives, that everybody gets the whole story. You want to hear our side. One of the basic things and whatever, the minimal counseling classes that I took as far as my pastoral training. I remember one of the professors saying, you want to make sure that you hear all sides. Listen to all sides. Don't interject your thoughts, but listen to all sides. Jesus was of the persuasion that actions speak louder than words. Our words do matter. And I'm sure we're all acquainted with the fact that words can hurt people. Words can sting. Words can bite. Words can have a lasting impression. Words can be painful. Words can, on the other side, be uplifting. Words can be joyful. They can be encouraging. They can be so many different things, but they have an effect. Words do. The thing with Jesus here, with his silence... How we, how we reflect words and how we show how that words convict, how they have conviction and principles that matters more by our actions. I can still remember as a young boy on Mother's Day, you know, we would, we would always tell mom on Mother's Day, you know, how much we love her, you know, and, and this. And uh, it, was, it was always a good day and it was always a positive thing. But we knew as young boys that if we wanted mom to believe that we loved her, that the words that we were saying meant something, that we would do things for her, not just on that day, but all the time. Things such as picking up our clothes in our room, which I was notoriously bad for, <laughs> or our, our toys or our things or, or our other stuff that she might ask us to do that we may or may not have found time to do. But those little actions showed her that we love her if we were in obedience to what she asked us to do. And I remember that. Actions speak louder than words. And she wanted actions. She wanted a demonstration of our love. So here we've got Jesus, as Gail has read for us, standing before Pilate. You've said, I'm the king of the Jews. So in the hours after Jesus has prayed here in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's prayed there. He's prayed for you. He prayed for me. He prayed for his apostles. He prayed for the world that they would know and see him as the Savior. But just in the hours after that, Jesus had been betrayed. He'd been arrested. He'd been denied by Peter three times. And he'd been presented at this moment to the high court and to Roman leadership to stand trial for his crimes. For his crimes. It it always blows my mind away as I was rereading this again last night. We get dogmatic on Pilate as the Roman emissary in all of this. And in the end, it was, he tried to wash his hands of everything, but he couldn't get the blood off. But in his heart, Pilate wanted, he wanted to let Jesus go. He tried desperately to let Jesus go. He tried so hard that he even said, well, I know that there's a custom that you have as Jews, where is, where I'll, I'll, this time of year during your festival season, I release a prisoner unto you. Who will it be, this Jesus or this Barabbas, who was a 
Convicted murderer. Convicted murderer. Enemy of the state. Enemy of the people. Just a terrible, awful blight on society he was. But because the people had been slipped money from the religious leaders, they cried out, give us Barabbas! Pilate says, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe you didn't understand. I'm giving you a choice between this murderer and, and Jesus. Maybe you didn't understand. I'll ask you again. Give us Barabbas! He even tried a third time. And they yelled even the louder. Give us Barabbas. And that's the point where Pilate washed his hands and said, you know, you're going to kill this man. I'm not part of it. But you know, Pilate, it's not that easy. Unless you receive that Jesus as your Savior, you're, you're part of it. You're part of it either way. You're responsible for his, his death. And his burial and his resurrection was for you too. He couldn't wash his hands of it. Even though our Lord was silent through the whole thing. This trial began, as Gail read, by Pilate asking, if Jesus was the king of the Jews. That's all he said. You've said it. You've said it in verse 11. And then Jesus went silent. He didn't speak. When the priests and the elders accused him in the subsequent verse, and we, we was accused of the chief priests and the elders, he answered nothing, verse 12 says. And the soldiers were there. This is in another part of the Bible uh, Luke 23, 11, the soldiers that were there, they say unto him, Luke 23, I'm going to read that for you, and Herod with his men of war sat him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous, gorgeous robe. This is a white robe at this point and sent him again unto Pilate. They mocked Jesus. Can you imagine one day those soldiers that mocked Jesus there, standing before the God of all creation, knowing what they did, how they did it, when they did it, and seeing him as their judge. Whew. That will make the hair in your neck stand up, nothing will. But they mocked him. The elders accused him. The soldiers mocked him. Jesus answered neither one. And then Pilate, back in Matthew 27 and verse 13, says, Pilate said unto him, Don't you hear the things that these witnesses are saying against you? How are you going to respond? He's basically asking. I need an answer from you. I need for you to defend yourself. stood there. I don't know if he had his hands behind his back or not, but he stood there and answered not a word. He'd been accused from all these different directions, from all these different people, all these different circumstances that they demand. This is the Roman leadership, the governor demanding a response. I want to take you back in your Bibles here to a couple different places. Either that, if you just want to make notes or make a note, fine. If you just want to hear them read, that's fine too. I'm back in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. I'm going to read verse 7 for you. Ecclesiastes is, is a book of all seasons, a book of times and places, of uh, a book of ups, a book of downs, a book of doing, a book of staying. But in Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 7, it says that it, there's a time to rend which means to tear apart. And there's a time to sow, which means to bring back together. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 7 says that. There's a time to defend ourselves. There's a time to speak up. And then there's a time to be silent in all of that. 
So in the midst of all of this roar of, and, and rage of anger that all of these folks are railing against Jesus and their frustration and the hatred that they're spewing toward him, Jesus was silent. Silent. His actions spoke his love toward them as to well toward you and toward me. And you know these actions. A lot of times we'll think that things in our lives. God, how could you let this happen to me? God, how could you put me in this situation, God? God, you know, why have you done this to me, God? How come you've allowed this? None of this caught God by surprise. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 7. I tell you, if you've not read Isaiah 53 lately, it's a good, good afternoon read today. The whole chapter is just, uh, just 12 verses long. But in verse 7, it says, this is talking about Jesus, saying, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Mouth. In the verses prior to that, I tell you, I just love this portion of scripture. Surely he bore our, our griefs and carried our sorrows and did esteem them stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded, wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes... We are healed. Man, that's some powerful stuff, folks. He's silenced through all of that. He spoke not a word. He didn't defend himself. What are the things that he could have done? You know, he had a pretty good audience there with all those folks. He could have just pulled the rostrum up, you know, or or, or something and said, well, you know, I'm going to teach you folks for a little bit. Give me a moment. I'm going to speak. I've got this sermon that I've prepared for you, and I want to share with you everything why you should receive me as your Savior. He didn't do that. He was silent. He didn't move against his accusers. He was silent. Why didn't he do that? Because he knew that he was in the will of whom? The Father. God, the Father. He knew that it was the will of the Father for him to be doing what he was doing. And sometimes when you're in in what you feel are unpleasant circumstances or situations and things like that, you may be in the will of the Father and he will guide you through whatever that is. And sometimes it's best not to defend ourselves, but just be silent and let our actions speak louder than whatever words that we might choose at that moment. Jesus' silence was prophesied hundreds of years before it ever happened. He knew the prophecy. He knew the scripture. He knew God's will, and he was plugged into it. There's much that he could have said at that moment to those folks to defend himself, but he chose to remain silent. Silent. He accepted the condemnation of his accusers. He did that for us, for you, for me. He did that for us. His silence was more powerful than his words at that moment. The last words of Jesus in this particular instance are not words at all, they're silence as he absorbed the accusations. Silence as they threw and railed upon him in hatred and animosity, accusing him. And he stood there and just took it. And just took it. I had a guy tell me one time that he said some kind of religious, uh, they were passing out religious uh, 
you know, things for the church or something like that. And that someone, uh, I probably shouldn't tell this story, but asking you guys to pass stuff out. <laughs> uh, the situation came up and something happened and I said, well, how did you respond? He says, I just smiled and took it. I was silent. I smiled and was silent. You never know. The world, even this time of year, I mean, as we, we are gearing up to celebrate our Savior's resurrection. This is what it's all about, folks. I mean, it's all about Jesus. As I said earlier, the world will tell us that there's every different way to fix ourselves, to fix our hearts, to fix our um, lives, to fix everything that we know is, is valuable in us. But there's only one way. God says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father but by me, Jesus says. We either accept God at his word, according to his word, or we push it aside and do what we want. We live in a world that's doing what they want. Our challenge as followers of Jesus is to keep our eyes focused on him, to follow him. That song I sang, you, you said you'd come and bear all my sorrows. You said you'd be there for all my tomorrows. In my life, I can tell you this, God's honest truth, the Lord Jesus Christ has never failed me one time. Never. He's never failed. He's kept every promise he's ever made to me. Never failed me once. Now, I can't say the back, that back toward him because I've fallen, I fall short of my expectations of me toward him, let alone what he expects of me. But, you know, even in all of that, he still loves me. Even when you fall short, he still loves you. Even when we speak out, when we should be silent, he loves us in spite of ourselves. Do you know him as your Savior today? If you're watching online and you've never trusted Jesus, I'm not talking about being a church member. I'm not talking about attending services. I'm not talking about just being good. Do you know Jesus? Have you asked him to forgive you of your sins? Have you trusted him as your Savior? Have you invited him into your heart and your life as your Lord? Have you invited him? If you've never done that, I'd like to share with you from God's word how you can do that in a personal and a literal way from God's word. Not by what I say, but what God's word says. If you'd like to know more online, just say, I'd like to know more in the comments, and I will find you, reach out to you, and we'll share that truth with you because we want you to know the Jesus that stayed silent for you today. Amen? Amen. God bless you, folks. The last words, the last words of Jesus. Amen. All right, 513. Laura, let's see here. 513. How many verses of this one are there? If you want to stretch your legs, you're welcome to. I'm going to take some prayer requests. Let's do one and four. One and four. When we all get to heaven, one and four. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, and shout the victory on the last. Onward to the prize before us, soon this beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the 
the streets of gold. When we all, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. All right, be seated just for a moment. Let's take a few prayer requests. I know that uh, we want to continue. Um, we had a little mix up. We thought Mark and Debbie were going to be in Florida today with Katie, but they're going down Tuesday, right? Okay, so let's continue to pray for Katie as they go. And uh, you've got an appointment and everything down there with her for the, the Mayo Clinic and, and all of that. We praise God. Uh, just praying that he would bless all of that going on and bless with Katie uh, too at this time. I got an update on Donna Hannaford. She is, uh, talked to Jim the other day, and uh, she is in the Chicago Christian Village, and uh, he is very, this is uh, as upbeat as Jim has been in, in a long time uh, with what's going on with Donna and the care that she's getting, and uh, the rehab, she's getting about like an hour, an hour and a half of rehab a day. They're trying to get her back walking and uh, building her back up. So just keep praying for Donna and praying for Jim. Uh, he's, uh, he's carrying a real load during this time as she's, uh, her, her physical needs have uh, been, been taking precedence. So just keep their, their family in prayer. And uh, others, uh, we're going to keep praying for, for Joe Hevener. As, uh, he's had some health issues and concerns. Uh, we talked with Dave's going to be sharing a little bit more here. Downstairs, we'll be talking to him about that a little bit more. We'll be praying for our buddy Joe. And who else? What else have you got? Anything online, uh, Deb? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just that Jim Sargent still in uh, Kansas, and she's uh, going, she's got a stomach ulcer, and they need to get her to Sadie. Okay. Okay, and, and Sadie says hi. And along that line, her son, Isaiah, was in a car accident uh, on Thursday. He was rear-ended, and he was actually in the hospital. And they weren't even sure that the wedding was going to proceed, but obviously it, it is. Uh, so just from, we're just glad that Isaiah is okay, and uh, his vehicle was totaled as he was hit from behind. So just one of those things, everything could change, you know, just like that. So we pray for Isaiah and uh, the, the nuptials that they are, are having today. Maureen, go ahead. This Friday? Wow. Praise the Lord. Jennifer will be coming home this Friday the 17th. Santa Patty is there, right? She'll be coming home. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. We know a lot of folks have been praying uh, for her with uh, that whole liver situation. So we just thank God things have gone well so far. And it's good to have Irene back. Amen. She's been out on the East Coast here. Well, are you going to give us a good Vermont accent, Irene? <laughs> How are you? What's on your heart today? Seth Father, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jay for nerve damage in his, uh, you says his arm or his spine? I think all nerve damage originally in the spine is okay. not positive, but okay. it's going out of his arm and he needs to have some nasty kind of glue. You know where gotcha. they throw any neurologists that glue mm -hmm. the arm and all that stuff? It's just a little. Oh boy. Okay. Not, not my idea of a good time, that's for sure. Okay. All right, let's pray for Jay as he's going ner nerve damage uh, and getting treatment for that. Okay, and pray for Kim as she's, uh, her ankle's still recovering and she's also uh, sliced her finger doing cooking dinner. That's not a good thing either. Okay, thank you. Okay, good to have you back. Good to have you back. Who else? Who else? 
Carol. C A S T O R. Okay. The Castor family. Okay. Pray for the Castor family. This lady passed away. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Our condolences to you as their friend. Who else? Okay. Dave? Okay, so John Jewett in the hospital, heart trouble or something? Yeah, I asked permission before he wanted to confirm this. Okay. Okay, so he's probably listening right now. Okay. So. okay. All right, thank you. No coincidence, sir. That's, God, that's, that's, that's a God thing. That's a God thing. Amen. I hear you, though. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for John and Gloria this morning as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And your sister, she's doing okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Okay. See what they found out. Okay. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, unspoken. All right, God sees your hands and hearts. Let's uh, remember those. We'll take a moment for silent prayer. And we'll pray out loud and ask God's blessings upon these. Lord God, we thank you for your blessings today. Thank you, Lord, for the sweet, sweet spirit in our service this morning. We pray this morning, Lord, for Katie. The circumstances... Uh, with her, Lord, and the, the fainting spells or uh, seizures, Lord, whatever's going on, that uh, we just meet her at the point of her needs. We pray for Mark and Debbie as they're away and they're uh, going to help attend to uh, getting her treated properly. God bless them and keep them safe. And Lord, we pray for Donna this morning. We just pray that uh, everything keeps going in the right direction. Pray for Jim as uh, just strengthen him, lift him up. We pray for our buddy Joe. Evener today, God, uplift him. Be with Terry, Surgeon, and her family as they're away for Isaiah's wedding. We're grateful that Isaiah wasn't, uh, wasn't harmed worse than he was, Lord, uh, in, in that car accident. Lord, we're glad that Jennifer uh, is coming home, Fronick's daughter, Lord, and uh, we pray as Irene has asked for uh, Kim for her ankle and uh, for circumstances there with Jay and the nerve damage that uh, he needs to get treatment for. We pray for that as well. And uh, Carol has asked prayer for a friend out in Seattle, the Castor family, Lord, who's lost uh, a precious loved one at a far too early age. We pray, God, that you'd meet them at the point of their needs. And Lord, for uh, Dave's sister this morning, Linda, we pray that you'd be with her. And as Dave has shared, too, John Jewett's in the hospital uh, with some, some concerns this morning, too. We just pray for them. And God, uh, we just ask that you touch as only you can. And Lord, if others uh, online have prayer requests, we pray that you meet them at the point of their needs, spoken or unspoken. Guide and direct our hearts. Uh, Lord, we, we love you and, and are thankful for you today. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone says together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 It's time we're going to receive our morning offering. You give as God is blessed and as you're able to. If you're watching online, you can use the online giving tool if you'd like to use that. If you're doing it for the first time, you will need to set up your information. They'll walk you through that. Uh, but uh, we appreciate your financial support of the ministry here at St. John's UCC. God bless you. Ushers, go ahead. Come. God, again, thank you for the gift and for the giver today. We thank you for the faithfulness of everyone at, at St. John's, Lord, uh, and making sure the needs are met financially here for our church. Guide and direct our paths in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies. All right. As we conclude today, 297, I think, is our, our last song. I neglected to mention, uh, at, I mean, you see these lovely flowers that Jim uh, has been doing every week for Joanne, and, and we've got Seegers with flowers this morning, too. Uh, we want to make you aware that there has been a price increase by the florist for flowers, so we don't want you to get sticker shock when, uh, when, uh, you, know, when you go to buy special flowers or something. Everything's kind of gone up again, uh, and Char has the information 
in the office. If you, so if you want to know what you're paying for, uh, she can give you that information at that time, okay? Uh, it's on the bulletin board. It's on the bulletin board uh, in, in the back. The one on the back or the one on the side? The one on the back, okay. So just check that out. You know, if you're like me, I always like to know what I'm paying for, you know, so that there's no surprises. All right, 297 at Calvary. Let's do one and four, Laura. One and four. <laughs> Years I've spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Laura, I would be remiss. I know we have several birthdays today. So we've got, uh, I know of one, for sure. Which other birthdays? We've got a cake downstairs, right, Judy? Who's other, who, who else is willing to own up to having a March birthday? Carol's got a March birthday, okay. Chris, Sadie, okay, so we're, let's see, we're going to do, we're going to do Carol, Chris, Kathy, and Sadie, Terry, Norma Rubo, okay, I don't know that I can remember all of those, all right, we'll do the best we can, okay. All right, Laura, one round of happy birthday. We'll probably sing it again downstairs. We'll get everybody, okay? God bless you. Right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Carol, Kathy, Norma, Terry, Zadie, and everybody else. Birthday to you. Amen. Amen. I can be dangerous sometimes, Jill. All right, God bless you. We do have a cake downstairs, uh, so let's close up service, have some good fellowship downstairs, and we've got a big week planned for next week. Remember, if you're watching online, if you want a special song, put your song in the comments for next Sunday, and we're going to do our best to sing uh, as many as we can as time allows. God bless you. Father God, thank you for a sweet, sweet spirit today. We thank you for your blessings and your mercy and your grace. And Lord, uh, we even thank you for daylight savings time. Lord, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be nice uh, to have light later in the evening. Guide and direct our path. We thank you for our birthday, folks. And uh, we just praise you for Jesus, for his silence, accepting condemnation on our part. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Walk with the king and be of good cheer, Jesus said. I've overcome the world. We'll see you downstairs.